Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection November 1, 2021 The Solemnity of All Saints Monday The Monday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Revelations. Revelations chapter 7 verse 2 to 4 and 9 to 14. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked, from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 24 verse 1 bc to 2, 3 to 4 ab and 5 to 6. Let our response be, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks him that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of John. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us, is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure, as he is pure. The Word of the Lord Gospel Reading a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 to 12a. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel In Matthew's Gospel, written for the communities of the converted Jews of Galilee and Syria, Jesus is presented as the new Moses, the new legislator. In the Old Testament the Law of Moses was codified in five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Imitating the ancient model, Matthew presents the new law in five great discourses, spread over in the Gospel, the Sermon on the Mount, the Discourse on the Mission, the Discourse of the Parables, the Discourse of the Community, the Discourse on the Future of the Kingdom, the narrative parts, which have been put in among the five discourses, describe the practice of Jesus and show how he observed the new law, and incarnated it in his life. The solemn announcement of the new law, in agreement with the context of the Gospel of Matthew, in the moment when Jesus pronounces the Sermon on the Mount, there were only four disciples with him, few people, but an immense multitude was behind him. In the Old Testament, Moses went up to Mount Sinai to receive the law of God. As it happened to Moses, Jesus went up to the mountain, and seeing the crowd, he proclaimed the new law, the solemn way in which Matthew introduces, the proclamation of the new law is significant. Seeing the crowds, he went on to the mountain, and when he was seated his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How blessed are the poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. The eight Beatitudes open in a solemn way the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mountain. In them Jesus defines who can be considered blessed. Who can enter into the kingdom. There are eight categories of persons. Eight entrance doors to the kingdom, for the community. There are no other entrances. Anyone who wants to enter into the kingdom should identify himself with at least one of these eight categories. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Jesus acknowledges the richness and the value of the poor. He defines his own mission in these words. To proclaim the good news to the poor. He himself lives in poverty. He possesses nothing for himself not even a stone where to rest his head. And to anyone who wants to follow him, he offers a choice God or money. In Luke's Gospel it is says, Blessed are you who are poor, but who is poor in spirit. It is the poor person who has the same spirit that animated Jesus. It is not the rich person, neither the poor person who has the mentality of a rich person, but rather it is the poor person who acts as Jesus. He thinks of the poor and recognizes the value in him. It is the poor person who says, I think that the world will be better, when the little one who suffers thinks of the least. Bless the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bless the meek, they shall have the earth as inheritance. Bless those who mourn, they will be consoled. Bless those who hunger and thirst for justice, they shall have their fill. Blessed are the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be recognized as children of God. Bless those persecuted for the cause of justice, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The New Project of Life Every time that in the Bible they try to renew the covenant, they begin by re-establishing the rights of the poor and the excluded. Without this, the covenant cannot be renewed. This is the way the prophets did. This is how Jesus did. In the Beatitudes, he announces the new project of God, which accepts the poor and the excluded. It denounces the system which excludes the poor, and which persecutes those who fight for justice. The first category of the poor in spirit, and the last category of those persecuted for the cause of justice, receive the same promise of the kingdom of heaven. And they receive it beginning now, in the present, because Jesus says, Theirs is the kingdom. The kingdom is already present in their life. Between the first and the last category, there are six other categories which receive the promise of the kingdom. In them there is the new project of life which wants to reconstruct life totally through a new type of relationship, with material goods, the first two, with persons among themselves, the second two, with God, the third two. The Christian community should be an example of this kingdom, a place where the kingdom begins and takes shape, beginning now. The three doers. First one the meek and those who mourn. The meek are those poor of whom some chapter 37 speaks. They have been deprived of their land and they will inherit it again. Those who mourn are those who, in the face of injustices in the world and in people. These two beatitudes want to reconstruct the relationship with material goods, the possession of the land and of the reconciled world. Second duo. Those who hunger and thirst for justice and the merciful. Those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, are those who desire to renew human living together, in such a way that once again, it may be according to the demands of justice. The merciful are those who feel in their heart the misery of others, because they want to eliminate the inequality among brothers and sisters. These two beatitudes want to reconstruct the relationship, among persons through the practice of justice and solidarity. Third duo, the pure in heart and the peacemakers. The pure in heart are those who have a contemplative look which allows them to perceive the presence of God in everything. Those who promote peace, the peacemakers, will be called children of God because they make an effort so that a new experience of God can penetrate in everything and can integrate all things. These two beatitudes want to build up the relationship with God to see the presence of God which acts in everything, and be called son and daughter of God. The persecuted for the cause of justice and of the gospel. The Beatitudes say exactly the contrary of what society in which we live says. In fact, in society, those who are persecuted for the cause of justice are considered as unhappy, wretched persons. The poor are unhappy. Blessed is the one who has money, and can go to the supermarket and spend as she wishes. Blessed is the one who is hungry for power. The unhappy and wretched are the poor, those who weep. In television, the soap operas diffuse this myth of the happy and fulfilled person. And without being aware, the soap operas become the model of life for many of us. Is there still place in our society for these words of Jesus? Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of justice and of the gospel. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who weep. And from my own perspective, being a Christian, whom do I consider blessed? 
We all want to be happy. All of us. But are we truly happy? Why yes? Why no? How can we understand that a person can be poor and happy at the same time? In which moments of your life have you felt truly happy? Was it a happiness like the one proclaimed by Jesus in the Beatitudes? Or was it of another type? I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where is my help to come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth.